Everybody get your fucking hands up Introduction to Child Safety Restraint Systems on School Buses. We bus drivers have an important job. Every day, we make sure millions of children get to and from school safe and sound. A school bus is the safest vehicle on the road for student transportation. And that's not just me saying it either because I'm a driver. That's from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA for short. Part of what makes school buses so safe are the compartments the seats form. You see, the seats are close together and have high flexible backs with energy absorbing padding to keep our young riders safe. Many school buses transport very young children, including preschool and Head Start students, and even infants. The school bus compartments alone can't keep these youngest passengers safe. So what are we school bus drivers, bus monitors, transportation coordinators, and school administrators supposed to do? The answer, my friends, is CSRS, Child Safety Restraint Systems. They come in many forms. They can be car seats, they can be safety vests, and they can even be built into the seats on some buses. Do you know what this is? It's the federal code that says all Head Start students must ride in CSRS. It's the law. Children riding on your bus who are preschool aged or younger should ride in a child safety restraint system. For the next few minutes, we're going to look at how to use three different types of CSRS on school buses. We'll talk about how to pick the right safety system for each child, how to install each system, and how to properly secure your young passengers in each system. Before we go any further, I want you to remember four important steps when it comes to working with child safety restraint systems. The steps are selection, direction, location, and installation. Kind of catchy, right? Now, let's talk about each of these four steps. Selection means picking the right CSRS for the right child based on height and weight, and based on the bus you are using. Direction can be rear-facing for our youngest riders, or forward-facing for older children. Location refers to where on the bus you install your CSRS. I'll point out some important things to keep in mind to protect your young riders and all the riders around them. Installation covers all the things you'll need to know to set up each type of restraint correctly on your bus. And once we have our child safety restraint system on board, I'll show you a few things to remember about each system so you can secure a child in it correctly every time. To that end, we'll cover the four S's of child placement. For each system, we'll point out how to check that you have the right size system for the child, that the child is seated correctly that the harness is in the correct shoulder position on the child, and that the straps are adjusted correctly. Size, seated correctly, shoulder position, straps. No sweat. Remember, it's up to us to keep all of our passengers safe. The following modules will give you the information you need to make that happen. Child Safety Restraint Systems Basics. Before we get to the good stuff and start getting our smallest passengers buckled up, let's take a moment to talk through some basics. First, let's look at some parts of the school bus seat and child safety restraint systems. A bus seat has a frame that is bolted into the bus itself. The seat, where you sit, and the seat back are both covered in padding. The little gap where the seat meets the back is called the seat bite. On buses, we have three options for installing child safety restraint systems seat belts, latch, and cam wraps. Okay, let's start with seat belts. Did you know that seat belts are required in all seating positions on small buses? Those are buses 10,000 pounds or less. On large buses, only the driver is required to have a seat belt. Some buses, big and small, come with seat belts already installed. Others can be retrofitted to have seat belts. If you are using a seat belt to install a CSRS, remember, make sure the belt is the right length. The non-adjustable end should extend no more than one or two inches from the seat bite. Make sure that the belt is not twisted or knotted. Test to make sure the CSRS is not too loose. With most CSRS, you should not be able to move the CSRS more than an inch side to side from where it is attached to the seat. 
Another way to secure a CSRS is to use latch. Latch stands for lower anchors and tethers for children. The tethers are for the top part of the CSRS and are not used on school buses, so we'll focus on the lower anchors. Latch is required in at least two seating positions on a bus weighing 10,000 pounds or less and will usually be found on the front seats if it is available. The lower anchors are rigid metal bars located in the seat bite. Some CSRS have attachments that snap on to the lower anchors. You should use a seat belt or latch to install a CSRS, but never use both. Okay, seat belts and latch are really helpful, but what if we drive buses that don't have either one? In that case, we might need to use a cam wrap. Cam wraps come with certain child safety restraint systems, like safety vests. They anchor onto the seat by wrapping around the seat and or the seat back. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for installing the cam wraps. Make sure the cam wrap is nice and tight. The webbing should make a dent in the seat top. You should check to make sure no part of the cam wrap is frayed or torn. The most important thing to remember with cam wraps is that the seat behind the seat with the cam wrap must be kept empty unless that passenger is also appropriately restrained. In a crash, an unrestrained passenger could be thrown against the seat with the cam wrap possibly causing injury to both passengers. All right, now let's play a little game I like to call, What's Wrong With This Picture? Take a look at this seat belt. See anything wrong? As you no doubt can see, this seat belt has a couple of problems. The non-adjustable part is sticking out too far. It should only come out one or two inches from the seat bite. Plus, it looks like someone tried to shorten it by twisting it and putting knots in it. That is dangerous. Any attempt to shorten or modify a belt could weaken it and cause serious injury. The entire seat belt should be removed and a new one of the proper length should be installed. Here's a seat belt that's ready to use. See how the non-adjustable part is nice and short, so the buckle remains accessible and allows the belt to be pulled tightly out of the belt path? How about this one? What's wrong with this cam wrap? There are a couple of things going on here. This cam wrap is not tight enough. Rear-Facing Child Safety Restraint Systems Children in Head Start and other early childhood programs can range from newborns to preschool age. That means some of our passengers are pretty small. Okay, let's look at our selection, direction, location, and installation for rear-facing CSRS. Selection Children under age 1 should always ride in a rear-facing CSRS. Be sure to select a seat that is the right size for the child based on the child's height and weight. The manufacturer's instructions and labels on the seat will tell you which are appropriate for infants. The other tricky part about selection is picking a seat that will fit safely on your bus. Some seats are simply too big to fit in the seat compartment. Make sure the seat fits without pushing up against the seat in front of it. Many rear-facing CSRS require that they fit entirely on the bus seat. Be sure to check the manufacturer's instructions for your specific CSRS. So after selection comes direction. In proportion to the rest of their bodies, infants have huge heads. Their neck muscles and spines haven't developed enough. Children under age 1 should always ride in a rear-facing CSRS. After age 1, for the best protection, children should continue riding in a rear-facing CSRS as long as they fit comfortably in the seat and are within the height and weight limits for the particular seat. Many rear-facing CSRS will safely hold children up to 30 or 35 pounds. The American Academy of Pediatrics and NHTSA recommend that we keep children in rear-facing seats as long as possible, up to the height and weight limits recommended by the manufacturer of the CSRS. So, we talked about selection and direction. Next up is location. Well, that's obvious. On the bus, right? Ah, there's more to it than that. 
rear-facing CSRS should be placed in the front seats of a school bus to take advantage of the location of seat belts or latch. The front seat on a bus will often have a flexible front panel that can make it easier to fit a rear-facing CSRS. We should make sure we consider the needs of the other passengers on board as well. A CSRS should be placed in a window seat so it will not block the escape path in an emergency. Never locate a CSRS in front of an emergency exit. Selection, Direction, Location, My favorite part's next, Installation. Always refer to the manufacturer's manual that comes with the CSRS. Here are some things to keep in mind. Use the recline adjuster on the CSRS to keep the seat reclined at about a 45 degree angle. We can use a tightly rolled towel or foam noodle or pool float to tilt the CSRS so that the infant's head lies back comfortably and her airway stays open. Next, install it tightly, using the seat belt or latch, but not both. Some CSRS have two belt paths, depending on whether they are being placed in a forward or rear-facing position. It's important that we use the right belt path. The CSRS should not move forward or side to side by more than an inch at the belt path location. When we install the CSRS, it's helpful to put our body weight on it to ensure a tight fit. Some rear-facing CSRS come with a detachable base. These are handy because they allow you to install the base in a fixed position on the bus, and they allow the rest of the CSRS to be taken in and out of the vehicle without having to reinstall it each time. Be sure to read the manufacturer's instructions for the correct position for the carrying handle on your CSRS. These can vary from model to model. Brilliant! We have our CSRS selection, direction, location, and installation worked out. Now, let's add the most important part, our passenger. Cute, huh? To place her correctly, let's think back to our four S's of child placement. We need the right size system, the child seated correctly, the correct harness to shoulder position, and the correct use of straps. Our little passenger weighs 19 pounds and is 11 months old. And our CSRS info tag shows that this is a good size system for her. When we're placing her in the CSRS, her back and bottom should both be right up against the seat. That's for our second S, seated correctly. We don't want her head to be closer than one inch below the top of the shell of the seat. If you have a very small passenger, you may want to place some tightly rolled blankets along the child's sides for support and to keep him nicely aligned in the seat but do not place anything underneath him. With taller children, it's still safe if their feet touch the seat back. In these cases, you can also crisscross the child's feet. Our third S is for shoulder position. For rear-facing CSRS, we use slots that are at or below the child's shoulders. We want the crotch strap in the slot that is closest to the child. The last S on the list is straps. We want the harness retainer clip to be at the armpit level. As always, the strap should not be too loose. To check, I recommend the pinch test. Don't pinch the baby, pinch the strap at the level of the child's shoulder. Try pinching the webbing up and down. Your finger should slide off. This little rider is ready to go. Okay, let's play What's Wrong With This Picture? Is this rear-facing seat really ready to go? Nope, it's not reclined correctly, and the seat is too loose. See how it moves more than one inch side to side? We'll use a piece of a rolled up towel to help it recline to about a 45 degree angle. You should put your weight on the seat while tightening it in place. Now, this CSRS is reclining at a 45 degree angle, and it's nice and tight. Here's a cute little guy facing the rear of the bus. But what's wrong here? Look at the harness. The harness clip is too high and the straps are in the wrong slot. Remember, for rear-facing seats, the harness strap should come from a slot at or below the shoulder. That's better. The harness clip is at armpit level and the straps are coming from just below the shoulder. Okay, last one. What's going on here? Her back and bottom aren't right up against the seat, which has caused her to slide down. She's so low in the seat that the shoulder straps are out of position. 
We'll use a rolled up towel above the crotch strap to keep her in place. Now she's in the correct seating position. The straps fit snugly and her harness clip is in line with her armpits. Remember to check the installation of the CSRS every time you use it. It's a lot to keep track of, but just taking a moment to review your installation and placement can help keep your young riders safe. Forward-facing child safety restraint systems. Children keep on growing. For the best protection, children should continue to ride in a rear-facing CSRS as long as they fit comfortably in the seat and are within the height and weight limits for that particular seat. Until they are at least 40 pounds, children should be in a CSRS that provides a full harness. There are lots of forward-facing CSRS. Some look like familiar car seats and can be installed using a seat belt or with latch. Others can be built in or integrated into the seats on your bus. Still other CSRS can be added onto a bus seat using cam wraps. Let's break out our handy list. Selection, Direction, Location, and Installation. We've already talked about selection. Forward-facing CSRS are for preschool children who have outgrown their rear-facing CSRS. Remember, for the best protection, children should continue riding in a rear-facing CSRS as long as they fit comfortably in the seat and are within the height and weight limits for that particular seat. If you don't have seat belts or latch, you may want to consider an add-on CSRS that uses cam wraps to attach it to the seat and seat back. Direction. These are all forward-facing systems. Location. If you are using latch, be sure to use the front seats where latch anchors are located. If the CSRS you are using requires cam wraps, remember that the seat behind it must either be empty or occupied only by a properly restrained passenger. Installation. You can use either a seat belt or latch to secure it to the seat. Never use both. Be sure you use the correct belt path and that you use your body weight to push down on the seat while you tighten. You should not be able to move the CSRS more than an inch in any direction at the belt path. A five-point restraint system can be added on to a school bus seat that is not equipped with a seat belt. When using one of these add-on CSRS, be sure you follow the directions from the manufacturer. Many add-on CSRS attach with cam wraps that go over the back of the seat and connect to an end that you push through the seat bite. They also may have a strap that connects around the bottom of the school bus seat. Always pull the cam wraps tight so the CSRS doesn't shift. The cam wrap should make an indent in the seat back padding. Once you've installed the CSRS, it's time to place your little passenger into it. This is where our four S's of child placement come into play. We can use them on all forward-facing CSRS. Size, seated correctly, shoulder position, straps. As you look at the child and the CSRS, ask yourself, is this setup best for this child's size? In a forward-facing CSRS, the child's ears should not be above the top of the shell. For an integrated or add-on CSRS, you can adjust the harness straps for most children. Then ask, is the child seated correctly? For children who are facing forward, their back and bottom should be up against the back of the seat. This is true even in integrated and add-on CSRS. Ask the child to scoot back in the seat. Otherwise, you'll not be able to adjust the straps correctly. Shoulder position. For rear-facing CSRS, we want the straps at or below the child's shoulders. But for larger children in forward-facing CSRS, place the harness straps at or slightly above the shoulders. This is true for forward-facing car seats, for integrated CSRS, and for add-on CSRS. Our last S is for straps. They should be snug enough, but not biting into the child's skin or pulling your body into an uncomfortable position. Remember our pinch test? It works here too. As you adjust the straps, check the harness clip. We want to make sure that it rides at armpit level so the straps don't slip off the child's round, flexible shoulders. If it's too low, it prevents the harness from properly securing the child's lower body. It's time for What's Wrong With This Picture? This rider is pretty excited about going to school, but look at that seat. See how the harness looks? The straps are too loose. 
The harness clip is too low. And look at her shoulders, our third S. The straps are in the wrong slot. Much better. The straps come from a slot at or above the shoulders on forward-facing CSRS. The harness clip is at armpit level, and the straps are snug. Here's an add-on CSRS being used. Think about our second S, seated correctly. See how the straps look tight on the front, but see how the child is slouching? This isn't safe. Remember to ask your riders to scoot back in their seats so their lower backs are against the seat back. Yeah! Then you can adjust the straps correctly. Much better. Okay, time to move on. Remember, any preschool aged rider should be in a child safety restraint system. Safety vests. Safety vests are fitted to each child and most can be put on before the child is on the bus. Okay, you know the drill. Selection. Safety vests are for children over 20 pounds and over one year old who can sit up in a seat. Remember, for the best protection, children should continue riding in a rear-facing CSRS as long as they fit comfortably in the seat and are within the height and weight limits for that particular seat. Direction. Safety vests are always forward-facing. Location. Since safety vests require a cam wrap, we have to make sure to leave the seat behind this one empty or occupied by a child who is also using a CSRS or an adult in a seat belt. Only properly restrained passengers can ride behind a seat with a cam wrap. You got it! It's time for installation. The vest has to be secured to the cam wrap at both the hips and the shoulders. You remember that we covered the cam wrap in Module 2. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Once it's installed, you should have straps near the top of the seat and near the seat bite. The webbing should be tight to the seat and create an indent on the top of the seat back. Adjustable shoulder straps need to be locked in place once properly adjusted. To do this, thread the loose end of the strap back through the buckle to lock the length of the belt. Now, let's look at the vest itself. These will differ from manufacturer to manufacturer but they all have webbing that goes around the child's torso, over the shoulders, and some type of crotch strap. The crotch strap is really important because it prevents the child from submarining or sliding out from under the vest. Make sure you know which side of the vest is the front and slide it onto the child facing the right way. If your safety vest has a zipper, the zipper goes in the back. Don't place a safety vest over bulky winter coats. If you're in a cold climate, put the vest on first and then put the coat on the child. You'll need to be able to access the buckles at both the hips and the shoulders. Adjust the shoulders so that the straps cross the torso in the right places. The lowest horizontal strap should be positioned low on the child's torso. No horizontal strap should come close to the child's neck area. Adjust the torso straps so they are snug to the child's body. Finally, the crotch strap should be snug but not tight. Check all the straps for snugness. And what do you know? Our four S's apply even here. Size, seated correctly, shoulder position, straps. The vest should be the right size for each child. Although vests are adjustable, always start with one that is close to the right fit. When we seat the child, his back and bottom should be up against the back of the seat. The child should be able to sit up straight, but not lean forward or slouch over. Shoulder position. Remember how our forward-facing CSRS used the slots that were at or above the shoulders? The same thing applies here. We want those adjustable straps on top to connect to the vest from above the shoulders. These shouldn't be so tight that they pull the lowest straps of the vest up to the stomach area. That could hurt the child's internal organs in the event of a crash. Our fourth S, straps, reminds us to attach the non-adjustable cam wrap straps to the rings or securement points of the vest near the hips and the shoulders. As always, make sure that none of the straps are too loose. Let's look at some examples in What's Wrong With This Picture? This little person doesn't even have to be sitting in a seat for us to see what's going on here. Safety vests don't work well over bulky coats. And look at the zipper. This vest is on backward. 
This is better. The zipper is at the back and the vest fits snugly. You can put the coat on over the vest, leaving the shoulders open. Here's another one. What's going on here? See how the vest is riding up on the child while his body is slipping out? That's a telltale sign that the crotch strap isn't being used. With the crotch strap in place, the vest will stay positioned low on the child's torso and keep him from sliding out. See how the child's bottom is all the way up against the seat? Once we get those hip straps of the cam wrap properly tightened to keep his hips back, we can adjust the shoulder straps. That's the story on safety vests. Remember to read those manufacturer's instructions so you can get a good fit on every child.